Oh, I think we're live now. We live? Mm -hmm. I see the live thing. Hey, everybody. Uh, as you come on, I'm having some uh, technical difficulties today from the house. So y'all, please bear with me uh, as we go live on Facebook. Um, I can't see <laughs> who's, uh, who's on or who's not on Facebook. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm glitching or not. Am I glitching, Ernest? Am I all right? No, you're good. I'm good. Okay. So I want to thank everybody for coming on today. Um, today, also want to make a couple of announcements before we begin today's uh, session. First of all, want to shout out to uh, Ernest J. Lee uh, for coming on again today and for uh, our production assistant, Letitia Frey, for all of her help. And starting today, we're going to do something different. Starting today, uh, Brother Lee is moving from a guest spot to a co-host. So uh, Brother Lee is going to be my co-host in this journey each week. We do, um, as we talk about just like, uh, and also we're going to delve into some different kind of things too. It won't always be uh, the same. It'll be some different stuff um, as we move forward. So before we begin today's uh, lesson, Brother Lee, you got any thoughts? Uh, no, just uh, thankful to be here with you, man, on this journey. I'm um, thankful to uh, be connected uh, with you in, in this season. Um, for those that don't know, I act officially joined uh, Allen Temple this week. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, I just felt, you know, the need to be uh, covered. You know, we, you can tell, you can preach to people, teach them, and tell them this and, and give them this word. But if you yourself is not partaking in what you're talking about, then it makes it uh, of none effect. So. Just thank God Absolutely. for connecting and being uh, connected with you in this season. And man, we're glad to have you on. Oh, I can see it now. Good. Okay. I see. I can see it on the Facebook, on our uh, Facebook account. Perfect. Yeah. We're glad to have you be a part of the church, man. And and you've been a blessing to us for the past, what, three years now. You've been a, a tremendous blessing, man. Um, since you. I came in, you pretty much came in with me. So yes. um, you, you've been a tremendous blessing. And I'm um, just thankful to have you and glad to have you here with us uh, at Allen Temple. So we're going to start today's uh, journey, today's lesson with um, worship post-pandemic. And let's just uh, take a moment to uh, bow our heads for a moment of prayer as we open up. Lord, we thank you for this gathering you've given us, this time you've given us, asking that the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts are acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So starting out today, we just want to talk a little bit about uh, worship post-pandemic and what it's going to look like. And one of the first questions I have for you and we're going to look at a little scripture too. But first question I have for you, Brother Lee, is this. Um, when do you think, um, not even Allen Temple, but period, when do you think we'll be back in corporate worship? Hmm. Ooh, that's a trick question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, um, wow. Let me go a different way with that. I'm, I'm, I'm not, okay. not answering the question. <laughs> You know, I, I feel now I'm not a prophet. I'm not a, uh, a, a gloom and doom person. By no, those that know me know I'm I'm always up on this side. Uh, but right. I will say this: I kind of feel like that uh, the, the the situation that we find ourselves in now is 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 on purpose. And what I mean by that is because uh, we talked about a little bit last week about uh, being connected and just your service to God and um, all that about faith. I really believe that this is a time like even in people speak of end times all the time and I'm not even here to talk about that. But what I'm what I'm going to say is I, I really believe that this time is a time that God is trying to see who's who's really where they say, say they are. So I don't okay. know who is going back. So because I'm saying I think it's 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 a spiritual thing, too. I don't think it's so. I mean, it's, of course, the pandemic and the and the um, coronavirus and all that. But I also think it's a spiritual thing, too, because. We made so many people idols, man. We made so many churches idols. We made so many uh, pastors idols. Um, and listen, because again, we are we are, are a uh, personality driven society, so that's normal. And I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying this is what we've made. You know, we've made this kind of thing. So I, I believe that God is the the Bible says those that worship it must worship it in spirit and in truth. So I believe that corporate worship uh, is coming back, but I also believe that He He took this time to shake us up to kind of see where our mind really is. What, what are we trying to do? And what, what has he told us to do? And, and are we really being obedient to what he told us to do? So I don't know. I mean, when we're coming back as what we call normal, but I think we should be back now. I know see, that's, that's, the, that's the next question too. The next question is, because I, I, I'm thinking in terms of corporate worship, I have no idea when we're coming back to corporate worship 
-hmm. one thing I do know, I'm, I'm thinking in, in terms, just pragmatically speaking, I don't know if it'll be this year. Gotcha. You know, I don't, I don't know if it'll be this, this uh, calendar year. I have friends that say they're not coming back until the, um, until 2021. Wow. I'm, I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry. 2022. Um, really? If there's no vaccine. Oh, okay. Okay. And, and so it's interesting to see now. And as far as Alan Temple, as far as we go, I don't know we're really playing it by ear, but the way it's looking, it's not looking like we're coming back anytime soon. I got you. Uh, for corporate worship. So when we do come back, the question becomes then, what is worship going to look like? For, for instance, you know, uh, you also, Brother Lee, <laughs> he, he likes to mess with me because he has different, he has different hats at church he wears. And <laughs> he likes to say that he wears whatever hat I want him to wear that week because he said I change right. up on him. <laughs> right. But, uh, <laughs> but he's always, he's always the director of our, of our, anything music at church, Brother Lee's the director of that. So here's the thing. They're saying choirs can't sing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, they're saying that, you know, even congregation, you can't have congregational singing anymore because you can't have the, um, you can't have the, uh, uh, you know, the, the singing out, the, the droplets and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah have you ever heard that one? No. They don't want, they don't want, con if I'm not mistaken, they're, they're saying no congregational singing because once again, even if you're six feet apart, that singing is going to put droplets out that really co corrupt the atmosphere in, in, the, in the age in which we live. So with all that being said, worship is going to look completely different yes. when we come back. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we have to have is, and, and this is just in life period, but for this, we have to have a willingness to shift quickly. Um, you, you, we, we can't be stuck in doing things a certain way. We have to have a willingness to shift at the drop of a dime. There's got to be a shift. Matter of fact, it may even be a shift from one Sunday to the next when we come back um, with those kinds of things. So what, what, what are your thoughts, uh, Ernest? What do you think? Well, see, that goes back to what I said about this being more of a spiritual kind of thing because it, again we've been we've been in church for decades and years and hundreds of years even and you know we say we love God we say that we um are worshiping him we say that we are uh doing his work and my whole thing is that we can't do none of the stuff that we was doing before then what is that gonna look like post pandemic then so mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that's why this is a relevant um subject because if we've been doing things a certain way then maybe we need to change them because if we can't sing and do all the stuff that we've been doing, then what what is our worship going to look like? Like really? Correct. I mean that's I mean that. So I, again, it goes back to my original point. It's a spirit. It's, it's spiritual. It's time to to check your spirit. I, I yeah. said this in the, um when I did the uh, Bible class a couple months ago. Uh, I think it was the last the last lesson. I, I asked the, oh, it was the second lesson. I asked the question, "How is your love life?" And I didn't mean in a physical sense with a relationship with people. I meant with the Father, with God. How is your love life? And that's a good question to ask yourself today as we delve into this subject of corporate worship post-pandemic. How is your love life with the Savior? Because if we can't do the same stuff we've been doing, then we're going to have to change up. And if we change up, can we keep up? Absolutely. Because um, the, the, the problem is, too, just the ability to, um, to make those shifts. And you said it, man, to figure out what's important and what's not important, because a lot of stuff we did that we called worship yes. is not worship. It's preference. I'll give you an example. I pastored a church, man, where, uh, not, not the church where I am now. I've been, I've been pastoring 20-something years. This is another mm -hmm. church. Okay. But, um, but they had it to where a certain choir, the, the, the older choir, the more seasoned choir, had to sing on first Sunday. And, and that was part of... Their, their culture and tradition at the church. So when I came in and I shifted it uh, because we wanted to do something different, they, they were in an uproar saying it, it disrupted their worship, but it did not disrupt worship. It just disrupted the culture and the flow of what they were used to doing. So we have to begin to separate then what is my worship from my culture and my flow according to my preference. Hmm. Well, um, 
that that goes back into again your service to God because everything ain't gonna look like you think it should look uh, as a as a as a congregant or as a uh, participator in the worship service. So again, what I just said, you have to you have to kind of decide where am I in this thing? You know, wh what is my position in this whole uh, pandemic thing as it relates to the church part of it? You know, the worship part because some people drop out because again we said it last week because we're not meeting week to week or we're not meeting. Uh, at a certain time in the sanctuary where we feel like we were not worshiping. That's not true because being a Christian is a, a is a, uh, it's a 24 hour thing. It's not a, something that you pick up today and you put down tomorrow. So again, being a member of a church or a body is not something that you pick up and put down. Now I'm saying something real good right here because this is something that I even have to think about. That's why I had to do what I had to do this week as it relates to joining because when you're not connected, and you're not, uh, and you don't have that spiritual backup, then you kind of out there floating by yourself. So again, what you just said about our tradition and how we look at things and our preference, well, just we got to understand just because we're not in worship every week in a building doesn't mean that we put down our membership or we put down our service to God or we put down our commitment to God even because the ministry and the word of God has to keep going. Um, ministry is, is, is ongoing. Uh, the word of God right. is ongoing. It's the good news. So we always need to be spreading the good news of Christ. That's what the Great Commission was all about. And see, and that, that you know, got to take it to scripture. And that's the scripture for today. Just as a backdrop, it's a very familiar passage of scripture. It's the fourth chapter of John, Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well. And, okay. and when we talk about worship, I, I like to uh, refer to this scripture a lot because simply uh, Jesus says, and I'm just going to go to one line he says, Jesus, you know, he reads the woman, he tells her, you know, um, she, he tells her who she is and she doesn't have a husband. And she asked Jesus this question. Um, she says, all right, so Jews insist Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is uh, elsewhere where our ancestors worship. So where is it then? And Jesus says this, and, and this is the time. The time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the father on this mountain or in Jerusalem, you Samaritans know very little about the one you worship while we Jews know about him for salvation comes to the Jews. But the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and in truth. The father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is a spirit. Those who worship him must do it in spirit and truth. So here's the thing. It's beyond the building, right? Yes. But another thing, I think post pandemic and at Allen Temple, we're really trying to do this post pandemic, man, churches. You, you got to make sure you do your best to step up your uh, digital uh, representation, yes. your digital platform, your digital signature, your, your digital persona, because yes. you got to be able to adjust and to adapt. And if you're not careful, a lot of churches are gonna get lost simply because of the unwillingness to do it or the unreadiness to do it. But you got to step up, don't be afraid to step up and step out. In Allen Temple, we're gonna have to do a lot. We're doing a lot now. We have always been doing a lot digitally. We've always been streaming. We've always been uh, collecting. Uh, and you've been awesome, tithes and offerings online and those things. But now it's even got to go further than that because that's another thing that post-pandemic worship is gonna look like. It's not gonna look like a building. Yes. Um, well, think, well, think about this. And I, I know we know this, but I don't think we think about this one this one main point that I want to make right here. I don't think we think about this a lot in church today. Our, who we serve, Jesus Christ. Did he have a church building? No. But what happened? When, when he went to the, the word was spread over the towns when he would go and the people would meet him wherever he was because the glory, uh, the glory of God was there with him. The, the power of God was there with him. He carried it with him. So the point I'm making is, see, we we get so used to a building and a pastor. No, not because the Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? I, I'm not. That's not my point. What I'm saying is, we get so used to the pastor telling us what to do that we don't understand that we have the power of God inside of us. We are the church. Absolutely. So the church is not necessarily Allen Temple or this church or that church. It we are the church. So wherever we go, we are the church. So we have to understand that. If we're corporate worshiping, if we're worshiping at home in our car, it don't matter because we have the power of God on the inside of us. We are the church. Jesus Christ didn't have one. He went to the people. He went and ministered. And guess what? There were signs following. Every time he went and ministered, there was something that happened uh, tangible. So we don't have to have a, a, a necessarily a church building for God to move. 
that's why you have to stay connected to what God has called you to, because it, it ain't really about the building. That's just what we meet to, to gather and we meet to uh, get our strength corporately. But you are, I am, we're the church. So with that being the case, then th this might be a good measuring stick. So when we do go back to worshiping in a, in a set place in, in our building again and back in the, in the place, mm -hmm. um, if, if using your model you just laid out, then if you go into church and, and you allow the spirit of God to shine through you, somebody ought to be following you to the building. Yes. You, you, <laughs> who are yes. you? Yeah. So, so the yes. building, the building can't be the attraction. Yeah. Jesus yeah. in you has to be the attraction. The building yeah. is just a container. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so the shift, the shift then becomes a, a paradigm shift where I'm, I'm not looking for the most beautiful uh, church building per se, although it's great to have, you, you want to have a nice facility, obviously, but I'm not right. looking for the most, I'm looking for where I can get the highest concentration of, of, for lack of a better word, of that spirit of God. Yes. And, and, and that spirit, the Christ Jesus just, just exuded to make, to make men uh, risk their lives and climb on a roof and cut out the roof to lower their friend down and beat the crowd and all that kind of stuff. I need that spirit. So yes. that, that's what we have to do. And that's what we have to be. So that's what worship becomes. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, so then, so then how do we now then prepare ourselves um, for that time when we do come back and in the interim, um, how do we prepare ourselves until we come back? They that worship God must worship in what? We just said it, in spirit and the truth. So again, you have to ask your question I just asked, how is your love life? Meaning, how close am I am to, how close am I to what God has called me to? How close am I to the vision he's given me for my life or the uh, uh, the mandate he's given me for my life. How how much am I doing it? Because I can't be effective in what he's called me to do unless I'm in line with what he's called me to do. Meaning, okay, if if he called me to Allen Temple, so yeah. for instance, and I made ruffles and fellows with this with some of my musicians friends, but some of us are not. Hey, all of us. I ain't, it's, it is what it is. But most of the times we take a job at a church, and it's a job. It's a but game. We, yeah. We, yeah, we ain't necessarily connected to it. So, see, uh, at my age, I've only really been at a ch at three churches, like officially, like literally. And all yeah. the time I've been playing over thirty years, I've really only been. At, and what I mean by that is because I believe that there is an assignment in your in your. I mean, there is a purpose in your assignment. So, when God called me to Allen Temple, it ain't just for me to come play and do what I do and run the department. That's that's part of it. Yes. But it's also because God has an he has a purpose in that assignment. So what is the assignment? It's it's whatever God told me to do while I'm there. So I have to learn what is what is my purpose here. So those that are listening and, and watching us, ask God, what is your purpose? Why why am I connected to Ellen Timboy? Whatever church I go to, why am I uh, 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 worshiping here, worshiping there? Because that's where your uh, uh, results are going to come from. Remember I said, when Jesus went and ministered, there was what? Signs following. So when you are in line and you are uh, uh, on your purpose or on your, on your walk with God, your journey, when you go, like you said, they should follow you to wherever you are because you got that anointing on your life. That's what we call it. The anointing of God is on our life. So people should always see what it is that you're talking about. Now, if I'm saying that I'm anointed, I'm this, I'm that, and I'm just as broke down as you, I'm complaining more than you, I'm uh, even as sick as you are, I mean, those that don't believe, I'm saying, and and I, and, I, and there's no hope, but there's no faith, then mm -hmm. why would you want to come follow me? So we have to prepare ourselves this way. We have to worship him in spirit and in truth. We have to get to our purpose. We have to get to the reason why that we do what we did. Not, not because it's a tradition or it's because we've always done it. Why do we even worship? And, and what I want us to do too, Ernest, is this. And for those that are listening and those that will watch this later on, um and and those that will um enjoy this hopefully and share it and like it and please like and share this y'all i want to see a lot of likes and a lot of shares please um this one else is worship because it's not the same as yours the, the woman at the well says to jesus she says look i was always taught to worship the lord at at, at the mount you were always taught uh 
that your people need to worship uh, God in, in the city, in Jerusalem. But where is the real place of worship? So coming back, you know, prior to, and I, I was guilty of this too, prior to uh, this pandemic, we, we kind of looked side eye at people who just did church online. You know, we yeah. we because as pastors, we make little comments like, you know, for those of you who can't get to church, cool. You know, we understand you watching online, but if you can get to the building, why are you not in the building? Why are you watching, you know, online? Right. And to me, that can also diminish someone's experience. So what I'm making an effort to do post-pandemic is this, especially post-pandemic, you can be next door to the church. You can live across the street from the church, but if you choose to worship digitally with us on a digital platform, then it is my responsibility to make that experience as great for you as I possibly can and not to diminish it, but to applaud the fact that you still, however you chose to worship, you chose to worship corporately with us. Mm -hmm. And that's what we got to be careful of. Well, yeah, but, but that's that's the reason why as a shepherd, and I can't speak of because I'm not a pastor, but I, I just know from being in church all the time, that's the reason why it's good to be in tune with what, what God is saying. Because again, uh, when God calls people to you as a, as a leader, then he, he equips you as a leader to give the people what they need. Now, how the method in which you get it to them is something that you got to work on as a pastor. In other words, it's your responsibility to say, okay, well, if I need to go live, or if I need to uh, uh, do streaming, if I need to invest in in, in, in our streaming services or whatever it is, in, my, in our virtual thing, then that's, as a pastor and leader, that's on you to do. You know, that's what right. God called you to, to these people for, because they need to hear what it is that you have for them. Um, how can they hear without the preacher, right? And how right. can he preach unless he be sent? So at the end of the day, when God sends you to a place and your assignment is for a certain people, he gives you that word for that region of people, for that group of people. And yes, um, the other people can listen and, and be blessed by what we do, but that's all a part of being on, like I mentioned a minute ago, being in line with the purpose that God gives you. Because when you're in line, you'll receive, we talked about it last week, the um, how the uh, the, the, how God touches the church, he, he, he's a delegated authority. Uh, it's God, his pastor's church, and then it's delegated to the, to the members. So mm -hmm. when God downloads instructions to you as a pastor, it's your job to download the instructions to us. Now, how you right. get there and how you get it to us is on you. So that's why we have to understand that worship in this pandemic may look different than it did five months ago, six months ago, because we still had to get the information to you, but it just may come in a different way. Go back and to the thing you talked about. And that's what I like. I like, um, I like the, the, you know, the scripture, uh, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. and, but it's often misconstrued because yeah. it doesn't mean that God doesn't, doesn't change. Um, it, it means God doesn't change God's grace and God's blessings, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that God won't change the method from time to time yes. as to how things are done. It means God's innate nature doesn't change. Yes. But it doesn't mean that we will always do the same things the same way forever. Yes. And that's yes. that's one thing we really have to get through our heads, especially in and, and we serve. Um, and, and you I thank you again for joining us, man, officially, you know, yes. in, in a more mainline tr traditional denominational setting. Mm -hmm. However, we, we got to get across the, the understanding that there will be some changes that will occur that have to occur for us to truly be the church, um, not only at Island Temple that's at your service, but the church that God wants us to be. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the Great Commission is what it is. <laughs> Go out and compare. Go. I love now, it. Now, it didn't say how. It didn't give yeah. instructions on how. It just said to go. <laughs> so it's to up go. to you. To, uh, you know, whenever you're called to something, it's up to you. And if, it's like when you get hired at a job or, or, or a career. Uh, when people go to college, that degree is, an, the other word for a degree is discipline. In other words, you're disciplined in this area of study, so now you can tell other people about it. So uh, when we try to win souls, the Bible says, he that wins souls is wise. So we have to figure out, we got to uh, do the research and figure out how we're going to reach these people more effectively, how we're going to keep everybody motivated during this time. Because again, if, if you didn't understand, and I'm talking about you personally, but if you didn't understand mm -hmm. that this pandemic was what it is right now, then shame on you. Because God, like you just said, he yeah, he never changes, but his methods and how we do things has to change. Do. Because to change. 
we, they didn't have the internet in the 60s. So no, yeah, they probably did chip revivals for all week long. Okay, that's why no, that don't mean we can't do it now. It just means that, hey, we can do an online revival. What's the, I mean, as long as the, pre, uh, the preached word of God is going forth, as long as uh, 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 people are being blessed, touched, healed, and delivered. That's, but think about this, Francis. That's why the um, all the people that came against, the, I think the, uh, the people that came, uh, Pharisees and all that, that came against Jesus, hated mm -hmm. what he did because he wasn't doing it traditionally. He wasn't Correct. in the synagogues and all this stuff preaching. He was preaching on the side of the road. He was going to put spit in people's eyes, and he was healing the, and raising the dead. That was unheard of. So they were like, who was this guy? Because it was, it didn't look right to them. It didn't look right. like what they had been doing. It didn't look like what they had been listening to. Uh, yeah, when you work with God, He may t He He uh, He what the word said. He takes the foolish things of the, uh, the world to confound the wise. In other words, it may be something that you think is stupid, but God may use it. He talks dumb talk. He talks locust talk. I mean, He He can do anything, man. And see the, the thing, and what I like most about what we said today because we're gonna wrap up my uh our our wonderful pa uh for our our chief of production she said that uh we, we get near our time limit now um <laughs> but the thing that gets me is this if 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 you're in the darkness okay and, mm -hmm. and you're stuck in the darkness and you want to get out of the darkness you're gonna go towards a light now mm -hmm. in our lives if we are shining to be the brightest light for Jesus that we can be, mm -hmm. then without question, we will attract um, people who are in the darkness. Yeah. And they will be attracted to the light that God shines through us. Yeah. Our worship, in my estimation, is what intensifies, is what magnifies, and is what um, prolongs that light. It, it, it turns it from a regular old school bulb into one of those LED lights. You know, something that could burn hot and burn fast, but not burn long to something now that can be brighter, last longer and and not have the stress and have more longevity. So that's what happens with our worship. So during this season, I, I ask and implore everyone to please get like like um, like Ernest said earlier, you know, check your love life with, with God and, and check your relationship with God so that as we move through this we will be not just somebody who says that we got better in the pandemic because of our worship, but that we were able also to draw more people uh, to, to God, to Christ Jesus, and we could really be a part of that great commission. Yes, that is the mandate. That is the purpose of why we do what we do. Uh, we're not, you know, we're not worshiping God to, you know, for form and fashion. We say that all the time as cliches in church, especially, but, you know, we really are worshiping God because of who he is. Uh, not what he's done, but because of who he is. And if we are to really fulfill the mandate of the Great Commission, then we have to find ways and means to reach the people that we're called to. There's some people that you go, that you can reach that I'm not going to be able to reach. There's some people that I'm going to be able to reach that Absolutely. you can reach. And Absolutely. that's why it's an individual thing uh, first. So how we prepare, like you asked me earlier, it's an individual thing. It's an individual um commitment to finding out your purpose, finding out why am I here. So then when I come back corporately, it all flows together. The Bible says that we're body fitly joined together, right? So right. the hand can't say to the foot that I don't need you. We all need each other. That's why that uh, I think David Frazier, one of my friends, David Frazier wrote that song for uh, uh, Bishop Heather Guy Walker, I Need You to Survive. That that song, because we can't, we need each other to make this thing work. It's not just uh, one person or, or two people do all the work. It's Corporately, when you understand your individual mandate, it's easier to follow God on the general mandate and the corporate mandate. Amen. Well, everybody, we thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're going to um, gonna go on and log off. We'll have a word of prayer. We're going to log off. Please uh, thank you again for being a part of this. Uh, Brother Lee, thank you for agreeing to co-host. No doubt. Uh, thank you for our chief of production. Uh, Sister Leticia, who uh, who helps us get through this every single week. And um, everyone, please like it. Please share it. And, and again, let your light shine for others that they may see your good works and glorify our worship be that light that shines. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity again to come before you, asking that the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts are acceptable to you. Please, Lord, bless us all as we lead and guide others to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, everybody.